Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Tom Noski. I'm a filmmaker, photographer, and digital artist based out of Melbourne, Australia. And I've teamed up with Canon Australia to bring you guys some of my favorite tips as far as editing in Premiere, Lightroom, and Photoshop. Things that I use on a daily basis and things that I'm sure you guys will be able to use and hopefully take away to continue creating even whilst we're all stuck in lockdown. Early on when I was learning Photoshop, one of the most difficult things for me to master or one of the most difficult things for me to wrap my head around and get better at was blending. Learning how to take something from one image and put it into another image and make it look at least somewhat realistic. But over time, I developed a little bit of a mental checklist that I run through every single time I edit that helps me get to at least a little bit more <laughs> of a realistic point. Obviously, the goal is not complete realism because that's not the goal of any of us digital artists, but we're getting there piece by piece. So today, I want to give you that mental checklist that I run through every single time I blend an image and help you get from this stage in your edit to this stage in your edit in a few easy steps. So without wasting any more of your time, let's jump into Photoshop and get started. So just to clarify what I have here, all I have is my background layer, which is the girl, the background and the sky. The girl and the surface were already in this image and then I've replaced the background and the surface layer here. If you want to see how I did that, I've got a whole video dedicated to this edit on my channel. But for today, we're just going to be teaching you how I blend this shark in to look a little bit more realistic. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to match the tone and the color of the shark. Now, to do this, I add these adjustments to the shark itself. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure sure that your shark layer or your own layer that you're editing with is a smart object. Now to do this, all you need to do is you need to right click and go down to convert to smart object. But for now, I've already got it as a smart object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to image adjustments and I'm going to first start out by adding a vibrance adjustment layer. Now the goal of this is I want to remove as much of the shadow and highlight color as possible because right now there's just way too much saturation in this shark. So I'm going to simply go and pull the saturation down to about negative 55. I'm going to pull the vibrance down to about negative 20-ish, so about there. I'm then going to go over here. Again, I'm going to hit adjustments. I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. And again, I'm just going to add a little bit more tone to the shark just to make it match a little bit more than it does at the moment. Nothing crazy yet because we're going to add local adjustments to the shark itself. If I turn this off and on, you'll notice that the darks on the shark don't quite match the darks on her on the underside here and on the surface and in the background. So what I've done by doing this is made the overall tone of the shark match a little bit better than it does at the moment. So once I've done this, what I want to do now is I want to work on my local adjustments. To do this, what I want to do is I'm going to add a group. I'm going to name this group the shark because that's the layer that we're working on. And I'm going to add this shark to the group. From here, what I want to first work on is the highlights of the shark, making sure these look nice and strong and match the highlights on her. So what I want to do to do that is I'm going to go over to the adjustment layers. I'm going to go to the hue and saturation. I'm going to hit colorize, and then I'm going to try and match the color of the background. So about 205-ish would be perfect. I'm going to add a little bit of saturation. So about 80 to 90. Let's go 90. And I'm going to add lightness to the image to about 80. And there we go. Perfect. I've added the uh, highlights back into the shark. <laughs> From here, what I want to do is I'm going to hold option on my keyboard and I'm going to pin this layer to the shark until this little pin thing. If you want to remove it, just hit it again. And if you want to add it, go here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to right click on the hue and saturation layer. I'm going to go over to blending options and then I'm going to pull from the underlying layer on the shadows side. I'm going to pull just until some of the shadows start to become revealed on the shark. So about there, I'm happy with. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to pull this to about 130-ish. So about there. I'm going to hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this layer mask with black by holding Shift Delete and then making sure I've got black selected here and hitting OK. And then what I want to do is I'm going to hit B on my keyboard or select the brush tool over here. I'm going to make sure my flow is nice and low at about, let's say, 8 to 10%. I'm going to go 9% here. And then I'm going to right click on my mouse and make sure I've got this brush selected here, this soft round pressure opacity in flow brush. Once I've got that selected, what I can do is I'm going to hold R on my keyboard to rotate the image because I like to paint away from my hand. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add highlights back onto this shark. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold Command J to duplicate that layer. And then I'm going to pin this layer to the shark again. So I'm going over here and pinning that to the shark. And then I'm going to fill this selection with 
black. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here and I'm going to go and add more lightness and more saturation. So about 95 and let's go to about 90 here. Make sure I'm selected on the layer mask again. I'm going to zoom back in again. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on painting some of the details in. So right at the edges, I'm going to paint in the highlights to make them a little bit more rich and add a nice amount of contrast to the edge of the shark. From here, what I want to do now is I want to start working on the shadows. Now to do this, what I like to do is I like to go to the adjustment layers. I'm going to go over to solid color and I'm going to select just a dark gray for now. And you're going to again, pin this to the shark and then you're going to fill this selection with black again by holding shift delete. Now from here, what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to double click on the solid color or the color fill. And then you're going to select using the color picker that comes up automatically, a dark point on the shark. So I'm going to pick over here and you'll notice that that's picked a nice navy color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down to make it a little bit more dark. And now with that nice dark navy blue color, we can go ahead with our brush tool again, the same brush as before. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to paint in some of those shadows back onto the shark. Now we can move on to the global adjustments. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this group. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to add another group and I'm going to call this one color. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color lookup table. So to do this, make sure you select it on your color group. I'm going to go over here to the adjustment layers and I'm going to go to color lookup. And then using the load 3D LUT option up here, I'm going to go down and add foggy night. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right click. I'm going to go to blending options and then I'm going to do the opposite from before. So I'm going to drag from the highlight side down to about here till those highlights start to come through and then I'm going to drag the shadows down to about let's say about here is perfect bring the opacity down to about 20 percent turn this off and on that's added a nice amount of tone now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another one so I'm going to go over to color lookup I'm going to go to foggy night and then I'm going to bring this one down to about 30 to 35. I think it's going to work really nicely. Now, the next one I'm going to add is I'm going to add one more color lookup adjustment. I'm going to go over to load 3D light and I'm going to add drop blues. Now, the reason for this is I don't like how rich the blues are at the moment, but I don't want to get rid of them entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the opacity down again to about 30%. That's made it look nice and faded and a little bit more moody. That's a stylistic choice on my part, but I really like the way it looks. Now what we want to do is we're going to close this group. We're going to move on to the tone. So we're going to add another group here. We're going to call this one tone. And we're going to start out by adding a nice shadow to the entire bottom of the image. So we're going to go over to curves. We're going to drag the highlight down to about halfway or about a third. So about here. And then we're going to drag from the shadow section here. And we're just going to drag that down slightly. We're actually going to lift these highlights up a little bit more to about here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with black. So again, make sure they're selected on the layer mask. I'm going to hold shift delete. I'm going to fill this with black. Make sure black selected, pressing OK. And then once that's filled with black, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit G on my keyboard to select the gradient tool. If you don't want to use keyboard shortcuts, it's just this little tool over here. I'm then going to make sure I'm selected on this gradient up here because each of these does a different thing. So make sure you select it on this one here. Then making sure that I've got white selected, I'm going to pull from the bottom of the image from about here to about her and add a nice shadow to the entire bottom of the image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact opposite. So I'm going to add a highlight to underwater. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over to the adjustment layers again. I'm going to add another curves adjustment layer. And then I'm going to pull this one up from the highlights to about there. Then by rotating my image, I'm going to hold R on my keyboard and just rotate it round because I like, again, to paint away from my hand. I'm going to select my nice soft brush again, and I'm just going to take my time to paint back some of these highlights. And now we're going to move on to the final step. And to do this, all you're going to do is you're going to hold Shift, Option, Command, E. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a merged version of your entire edit so far. So if I hold option on the little eyeball here and I turn the rest of the layers off, you'll notice that this is just my entire edit so far in one layer. Now, once I've gotten that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go and convert this to a smart object. So I'm going to go over here to filter. I'm going to go to camera raw filter, and then I'm going to essentially do what I would do in Lightroom.
And then I'm happy. If I hit enter, then zoom out by holding option and clicking with a little eyepiece, I'm pretty happy with that. If I hit OK, now that adjustment has been added to this layer here. So if I turn this off and on, that is the before and that is the after. I hope this video helped you out. I hope this video encouraged you to get back into editing your images and, and use this time in lockdown a little bit more productively than you might be at the moment. And if nothing else, it just inspired you to start creating again. Again, thank you very much to Canon Australia for having me on. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys in the next one.